particularly pleased today to be able to welcome to the stage Professor John Pinkerton from Queen's University Belfast. And John was involved in the, in, in the development of the first children's strategy um, developed in Youth Work Ireland. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to help us understand the task at hand. So thanks very much, John. Okay, we're going to um, start off straight away by saying that uh, I can just about swim a length these days and uh, my singing clears rooms, so um, I'm not even going to go anywhere close to the uh, previous um, two uh, speakers. Uh, what I do hope to uh, bring to the conversation that uh, you're already having a, today as a part of uh, is the, some reflections on the experience of having been uh, what I've described as an inside-outsider. Um, I came down from Belfast to uh, work with the team that put together the National Children's Strategy over 10 years ago. So it's coming down from the north to a different um, system here. Uh, and I was coming with a very particular focus. Um, I'm interested in child and family social work um, and it was finding a way in which that would connect in a way that was helpful for the uh, development of the strategy and it's kind of similar kind of thing I'm going to try to do uh, this morning is in thinking about that experience because that's what I've been asked to do to, to, to reflect on uh, what what might come out for me from that experience that may be helpful um, to you in, 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 in your thinking about the task you've got in hand. Uh, I, I really want to emphasize two things, uh, and it's what you see up uh, behind me here at the moment. Uh, I think this is an opportunity to uh, celebrate a diversity of involvement. Um, that's one thing I want to stress. But the other thing I want to stress is to be a little cautious of the outcomes wand, and I'll say what I mean by that in a, in a moment. Uh, I was given a wonderfully broad brief for this, as I said, just reflect on the children's strategy, <clears throat> but there was a suggestion that I might reflect on children and youth policy in Ireland, the, the kind of substance of it. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that. Um, I am going to look at the issue of uh, the policy process, the issue of outcomes, which is the focus of uh, this morning in particular. Now, in particular, what I want to do is, uh, I want to, I, I appreciate this is a conference called a consensus conference, uh, but I actually want to suggest there are some questions that need to be uh, raised about the notion of outcomes and outcomes-driven policy and practice. Uh, I'm going to suggest that there is a tendency to the fantasy, hence Harry Potter, the fantasy of this wand outcomes that is going to sort out a lot of problems, going to sort out policy problems, going to sort out um, practice problems. So that's one of the things I want to do is to raise a bit of a question mark over that. And in doing that, I also want to say that one of the problems with the, uh, the fantasy about the outcomes one is that it's going to banish wickedness from the world in Harry Potter style. Whereas in fact, maybe we should see the, the, the wickedness understood in a particular way, and I'll say a bit more about that. Maybe we'll see the, the wickedness of the world as being the, uh, the richness, uh, the, the, the difficulty, the complexity um, of the uh, world that we all exist. Maybe we should just recognize that and uh, see how that can be helpful to us. That's the second thing I want to say. And then finally, and maybe most importantly, I hope that, um, that what I'll be saying will be taken as a salute to the diversity of involvement and achievement that all of you represent. Uh, and I hope that what I have to say may have some uh, connection with the kind of rich pool of experience that we have in this, have in this room. So, those three things. Well, let's start with the outcomes question. Now, I'm not dismissive of the notion of outcomes by any means. Uh, 
as you'll see from behind me, there's uh, first of all the children's strategy itself. It was one of the most stimulating, I think one of probably the most, it turned out to be one of the most important uh, years in my career um, spent down here. And the children's strategy was explicitly um, outcomes um, driven. Uh, the, the, the thing you see on the right of the screen is a slide that I would use in um, teaching uh, with social work students at Queen's uh, where I'm saying that what we're in the business of is how we create good outcomes, so kind of committed to the notion of outcomes there. Uh, alongside the children's strategy you also see the cover of the Northern um, Irish equivalent uh, to that, our children's strategy which I was involved with some elements of as well. In Queen's, uh, beneath those the two strategies, there's the strap line and logo of a research network, it's an interdisciplinary research network across Queen's, uh, focusing, as you see, on uh, children's services that are outcomes-focused, evidence-informed, and children's rights-based. I'm on the management committee of that. And then the last um, logo I put up there for, for the National Children's Bureau, I sit on a membership forum in, in London for the National Children's Bureau. And in the last couple of years, the point that was made right at the beginning this morning about we're in a situation where resources aren't, uh, not only are they not plentiful, they're probably declining, or just certainly resources of a certain type. And what's been interesting in the discussion with the National Children's Bureau around how we cope with the lack of loss of resources has very much been an outcomes debate. So outcomes are certainly on um, my agenda. Uh, it is important that um, we use and understand the, the language of outcomes. I'm, I'm convinced about that. And I don't think it's very hard to become convinced uh, about it because there's a, there's a kind of common sense appeal to the whole idea of uh, outcomes, particularly when you link, link it with uh, ideas of assessment and uh, indicators. Uh, I know um, my friend and colleague Pat Dolan from NUI Galway is going to uh, be summing up today and what you see in, in terms of that map is uh, a slide which I stole from him from a presentation he actually did in the, in the North on outcomes and the, uh, the idea is just to kind of illustrate um, just how commonsensical uh, pursuit of outcomes is. So Taking the kind of sporting theme um, forward a bit, if, if we were organising um, some kind of a race to take us from one side of Dublin to the other, uh, what we do is we kind of we're trying to make an assessment about where would be a good place to start, where could we gather people in together, um, where would we um, launch them out from, uh, and where would we want them to go to. So we'd have a start to it, and we'd have a, a, a finish to it, and. Finish to it means the outcome. That's, that's what we'll be trying to achieve. How to get X number of runners from start point through to uh, finish point, uh, and out of that, get a winner as well, uh, a gold medalist. The illustration makes it clear that uh, it's also helpful to think about points along the way. If you want to get from here to there, it's useful to think about, well, are there going to be stop-off points? Are there going to be refreshment points in our, uh, uh, our, our, our run? Uh, and that's been helpful uh, as a, in the outcomes debate of breaking down the, the journey from start to finish. Uh, so that we're thinking about, well, along the way, are there indicators that we're getting to where we need to get to? So if a third of your runners didn't pitch up at the first uh, refreshment point, you would have a problem. Uh, so there's, there's a common sense appeal of, uh, of this way of thinking about uh, social policy issues, um, the development of uh, policy. So I'm fine with all that. But I do have some concerns that behind this common sense appeal of working out how we get from here to there, there is a, there's another fantasy. There's a fantasy that somehow we could uh, achieve these perfect outcomes if only we had the framework, 
You know, if we can get it absolutely perfect, we get the framework, just as we try to get the strategy. Once you get the, the framework right or the strategy right, then you've got this kind of blueprint to build the perfect machine, the perfect uh, system, uh, the perfect targeted youth work machine in this case. And what you do is you'd, uh, you get all the components that you need, you get your uh, dollop of participation, you get your assessment in, you're only using programs that have been through um, evidence-based practice, proven um, tests, you've uh, got lots of good planning, program uh, evaluation. Uh, so you've got all the right components, you put them all together and you've got then this perfect machine and you kind of shove young people in at one end and they come out the other end just like you hoped they were going to, having had the experience that they wanted um, and being the sort of uh, active, young, concerned citizens that uh, the country is looking for. Now, I could be accused of um, building up uh, a straw man so they can knock him down, but I do think that underlying a lot of the discussion about uh, outcomes and the importance of, of, of outcomes is, is, a, is this fantasy. Uh, and I just don't think it's like that. Uh, and I think we have to be very clear that uh, there may well be the sort of thinking that lies behind the fantasy I've just described. And, it's a, and this is a part of the language, which I'm sure you've all begun to um, learn. Theory of change is another idea. Logic model you may have tripped across at some point as well. Now these are actually useful um, terms. And the theory of change, for example, uh, I want to use here, because I think behind the uh, the, the fantasy of that, if you like, factory model of, of, of youth work um, is a theory of change, i.e. we know how to get from here to there, uh, there's a, we understand the process, uh, there's a theory of how to um, get from here to there, from, to change this to that. And the theory of change that tends to lie behind the, um, the, the promotion of outcomes is this nice... Uh, virtuous circle you see behind me. Now something like this is great for my purposes as a teacher because it is nice and clear and you so you send to students, well if you want to understand where the children's strategy came from you have to see this as a policy initiative um, by the government of that period in the context of the Celtic Tiger uh, and that policy initiative led to us doing this major consultation um, out of that consultation comes a policy document, a policy document full of uh, clear outcomes and indicators, and then people go off and implement it in the various sectors that they're working in. And after a period, we evaluate it, um, and we evaluate it against the outcomes and the indicators that we set out in the beginning. And if anybody has a look at the uh, last chapters of the National Children's Strategy, you'll see that uh, that is very much the model that we were working with. And I think it's a, it's a useful uh, model to, to, to work with and have in mind. But the problem is, well, it's experience, it's real world, it's that wickedness I, I, I mentioned. Because this uh, virtuous circle in my experience, is much more a wheel of frustration. Instead of that nice, tidy, upward spiral, what you get is this mess, this kind of dog's dinner of a thing. Uh, you, your policy initiative, when you go out to, to, to consult, you find that you've missed the people you really needed to get to, either because they were hard to reach, or on the contrary, they're the ordinary punter who often doesn't get asked. Um, but they're not some way connected or engaged with the um, system, so they don't really get asked. Uh, when you come to thrash out the, uh, the, the indicators, your outcomes and indicators, you suddenly find you're, part, you're in the middle of some sort of a turf war between uh, two voluntary organisations or the state agency and the voluntary organisation or two different bits, two different departments within the um, government. Uh, and everybody's at war with the Treasury. And that kind of dictates what begins to really um, go into it. 
Um, even if you get beyond that then into the business of uh, trying to implement your policy with a view to your outcomes and indicators, you come up against it. Budget constraints, staffing um, problems um, uh, emerge, uh, major restructuring gets, um, gets in the way. Uh, and you come out the other end trying to do some sort of evaluation of this, and um, I say this as somebody who's attempted to do evaluations of um, social policy. Uh, that's a nightmare as well because nobody really thought how the indicator was going to be turned into uh, a, a piece of data that we could actually easily get, a piece of information that we could easily get. So you have all these problems with um, um, accessing appropriate data. And then another problem is everybody's just fed up with it. They're bored with it. That was kind of uh, five years ago. Uh, who cares now? The world's moved on. There's new people in, 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 in place. Uh, there's new policies, new priorities. So that's uh, at times that gets to the point where you say, what the hell, what's the point? There's no substance to any of this. It really is just moving around deck chairs to keep well people like me um, gainfully employed. I don't think that's the case because I do think that the, uh, the, the kind of neat model that um, I suggested is there uh, allows us to recognise more clearly, uh, to face up to the, the, the wickedness of, of, the, of the world that we're actually a part of. And that wickedness is not in the sense of, of, of morally um, objectionable, but rather just the, the, the messiness of it, the, the richness of it, the, the difficulty of it, and actually, when it comes down to it, the wonderfulness of it. That's kind of the way uh, the, uh, the world is, and that, that's what makes it work getting up in, in, in the morning. Now, two of my colleagues at Queen's have used this idea of wickedness uh, in a social policy sense to look at child protection in particular, but the same sort of points, I think, apply to any um, issue, and I'm suggesting they apply to your discussions today. Uh, the first thing is you, ha having to recognise that there's no real clear definition of what the issues are. The issues are always messier than they appear when you kind of put them in a, a I don't know, a, a nice little paragraph for a report or something. Uh, they're always intermeshed. Uh, you're always working with certain constraints that, well, okay, it doesn't apply in this situation, but it would apply in that. Uh, there's also a problem that there's no real uh, stopping rules. The, the idea of the, the race comes to an end, going back to that um, metaphor, well actually these races never really come to an end, or they only come to an end because you run out of money or you got bored with it, or, so there's no neat natural end to this stuff either. Uh, and there's no clearly right or wrong response. You know, you have to make a judgment call and well it was a better, I think that was a better response than, than, than the other one which we could have done. Uh, but, but it's probably going to be in the area of well it was good enough or not good enough. It's certainly not going to be this was right and that was, that was wrong. The issue that you can talk about in general terms for a platform like this, when you get down to the nitty gritty of how it looks like in a particular youth club or a particular neighbourhood, it comes down to the specifics. You have to be looking at the unique and novel fashion in which an issue is, uh, is expressed. You can't just generalise it um, uh, away um, to, and take it away from its context. Uh, you're also not going to find any off-the-shelf uh, solutions to issues. There's not one size fit all solution. Every uh, piece of youth activity has got to look like this. Or even there's only 10 pro-youth programs that um, work and therefore should be being supported and everything else should be closed down. I just don't think that is the, the, the real world. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, the other interesting thing that Trevor and uh, John drew attention to is the last one on this. Because we're part of a world that's developing the whole time um, into the future, everything's a kind of one-shot go at it. Uh, because as soon as you've done it, it's become the past. So you can't, um, you can't really go, around, go back and uh, fix it. You can't make a second, have a second stab at it. Maybe you can fix it by doing something different, but you can't have a second stab at it. You, know, you, you make a decision, you make a judgment call, 
you may, I know you work out well, maybe could have done that better, or maybe going to do it different next time. But there's no kind of going back. And we, we need to recognise that that's a part and parcel of, of, of this wickedness, which makes it messy and difficult for people promoting a nice, neat um, outcomes uh, perspective. Now, in, um, I was going to say in defence of, in praise of, in recognition of is the right word, I think. Maybe in recognition of something which I think we did get right in the National Children's um, Strategy. Uh, but whilst we did buy into the um, outcomes, and rightly so, I think, more important, I think, we understood that what the National Children's Strategy was about, and what I suspect you're about now around this framework, is uh, convening a policy community, convening, getting together bunches of people who care about the issue in hand. Uh, and I think the National Children's Strategy, we were conscious that that's what we were doing, which is why it includes the, um, the words that you see uh, sections of, uh, from, from sections of the, of the strategy up behind me. Uh, we expressly said that it was an opportunity to enhance the status and further improve the quality of life for Adam's children. It was a statement of support for parents and what they were doing. It was an invitation to everyone who works with children in whatever capacity to work together more effectively. And it was an encouragement. It was an encouragement to children to become more formally involved in their own in, uh, development of uh, policy. So there was a kind of, I think, correct emphasis on not just process, but a, an open, inclusive, inviting uh, sense of process that uh, said, we don't know exactly where we're going to go with this, although we have all these indicators, etc. Uh, but we know we're, we're going to get more out of this if we somehow work to, together on it. And I think that moved, where we didn't maybe go as far as we could, was understanding that uh, the, the idea of policy community that I use is a fairly restricted one. Uh, there's actually more people interested in the lives of children and young people than I think we attempted to address or, or, or give um, recognition to. Uh, going back to the, to the race notion, um, well, what I'm trying to say is that there's an awful lot going on out there, no matter about policy frameworks or, or, or anything else. Uh, and I actually think this notion of uh, issues network uh, it is a term that these people, Bichelle and Bichelle, um, used in terms of um, British uh, social policy, uh, where they argue that you Good, successful social policy must have this much broader framework. Uh, it must recognise that the uh, an involvement of many, many more types and numbers of actors uh, than, than is often um, thought of. Uh, it's got to recognise that there are a whole range of relationships amongst the actors. Uh, it needs to recognise that whilst there may be a shared interest in a particular issue, there'll be a lot of ways of coming at that um, particular issue. And what's more, there's going to be disagreements over it. And that conflict uh, and argument is as important as the um, agreement and consensus. Uh, and that the, uh, the stuff that matters is going on in a whole lot of different places. And so if you think of that point on the, um, the, the, one of the, the, the long races as part of the London um, Olympics, all those people, whether it's the, the, the cyclists at the front or their backup cars behind or the stewards who are the sides of the roads or the people who are um, watching the race, they're all a part of this thing, uh, but they're all bringing very, very different things to it. Uh, and not only is that the way it is, um, that's, that, that's what makes it most likely that we're going to somehow come out of a process uh, like this around developing a new framework for, for youth that's going to actually be worth uh, having. And because of that, I think what uh, we need is an alternative uh, theory of, of change. I'm suggesting to you that um, what you're involved in shouldn't be seen uh, so much as managing and controlling this social policy process, the development of, of, of the framework, uh, 
but you're working in interesting creative ways to release a, a, an energy uh, and a creativity that will actually take youth work forward uh, within, uh, within Ireland and I think within the island as a, as a whole. Uh, and I think to do that requires a number of things that are maybe different to the important things that we'll hear no doubt later about in terms of outcomes and, and indicators. It means attending to things like um, staying engaged and motivated, uh, getting support from uh, uh, each other and, and other people. Uh, it means accepting but also testing the whole time the constraints. Uh, we are where we are and we have to, to, to work w with that. Uh, and that means that we uh, make the most of the opportunities that we've got and we minimise the restrictions that will be there and will not go away. There is no magic wand that will take them away. Uh, we've got to be conscious of the bigger picture, the uh, collapse of the economy, where government's austerity programs go, whether that's acceptable or not. Those are all part and parcel of this um, discussion, whether we like it or not. Uh, and we've got to recognise that there, uh, 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 no outcome can be fully predicted. We are not in that sort of a, 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 a world. So kind of get used to it, um, uh, kind of outcomes planners. Uh, the other thing is to expect the unexpected. Uh, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing, but you always be having to be watching out for it. Stuff will happen which will turn out to be the most useful thing uh, in terms of achieving an end, um, or the, the thing that really collapses what it is you're trying to do. And I think we should be um, up for just accepting that's likely to be the way it is. And then the most important thing, I suppose, is the last, which is engaging in an open and inclusive sharing and debating, which, as you can see, brings us right back to today. That's essentially what you're about, and that seems to me to be the most important one of those lists. Uh, and for my money, the, uh, the image that I would want to leave you with um, having abandoned the, the map and the factory and even the uh, cycle race. That's the image I would want to leave you with because really the sum of my reflections for what they're worth, and it's not rocket science, is that we've all just got to get out there, do the best we can, whatever we find out there, do it together, learn from it, and enjoy it as much as we can. Thank you.